First story. After 16 years of no contact, my abusive parents barged into my apartment, demanding I give it to them and sue for alimony. That's how one got dead and another is behind bars. So, I'm a 35-year-old female living quite a comfortable life now, thanks to myself and only myself. I come from a very conservative family, dominated by men. My grandparents had two daughters. My mom, my aunt, and my seven uncles, from a country where Catholic values are deeply engraved in people's minds and souls. As a girl, I was always looked down upon and kept on a tight leash. I was supposed to be seen, but not heard, be polite and subservient towards everyone, be pretty and girly etc. That never sat well with me. I was that pants-and-mud type of girl. Not the Barbie doll everyone expected me to be. Thanks to that, I spent most of my childhood days grounded in my room, and to this day, I refuse to have an ironing machine at home. Shortly before my 16th birthday was my tipping point. Things I do not wish to disclose happened, and I decided to simply vanish into thin air. The next 12 years were. Let's just say that it wasn't the most honorable time of my life. But I managed. By the age of 23, I had bought my first house without a mortgage, credit, or anything else. Hard cash. Since it was a time when I was working at a club and also sleeping there, I decided to rent the house out. Extra income never hurt anybody, and besides, I didn't plan on working in a club forever. I enrolled myself in online classes, finished high school, and thought that it was a good time to go back home and show everyone that I can actually make something out of myself. That didn't go as I thought it would. There were a lot of harsh words. Things got pretty ugly pretty quickly. And let's say that I had to take about a month or so off work to physically recover from the family reunion. My then boss's wife, bless the lady's heart, was and is a gentle, loving soul. So I stayed at their place during my recovery. That's when I decided that it wasn't worth the hassle and heartache of trying to win my family over. I changed my legal name, phone number, and email, deleted everything connected to my past, and flipped my life around. Despite my profession back then, I had a way of getting along with older people. They liked peace and quiet, and so did I. By the age of 28, while still working at the club and privately, I got my nursing degree and elderly care certification. I'm not from the US so it might be different, and owned three rental houses. Around the age of 29, I got a job as a live-in nurse caretaker for an elderly couple in Switzerland. And I have been doing that to this day. I am jumping between Germany and Switzerland as a live-in nurse. Pay is pretty good. I have no living expenses. I have rental houses as additional income. And life is great. Last year, I was able to make my biggest dream come true. I was able to buy a building with 20 flats. Don't get me wrong. It's not a high-rise or anything. It's not the USA, where I come from. The building has five stories, each with four flats. Nothing fancy, but I was happy. My idea was to rent out the flats at the minimum rent possible for those in need people who need a safe place to stay while getting their lives back on track. And everything was going well until last Thursday. I have an agency responsible for renting out the flats and interviewing people interested in living there. I sit on every single one of them, personally or online because I want to be able to see and get to know my future tenants. Boy, was I surprised when I saw that the people who were in the online meeting were none other than my parents. At that point, I saw red. I told the agent that hell freezes over and starts burning out before any of them step a foot onto my property. I then told my parents to go to hell and never come back, or I'd put them in prison for the rest of their lives for what they did to me in the past, if they ever tried to contact me in any way, shape, or form. So, Ada for telling my parents to go to hell without even bothering to hear them out. Comments. Valuable Ant 969. How could you possibly be ta in this situation? OP. Well, since Thursday, I've received countless phone calls from extended family about how I've brought shame to the family with my past actions and how I should repent for my sins by helping my family. They got my number from the real estate agent. All my potential and current tenants have it just in case something comes up. And yeah. Valuable Ant 969. I'm sorry the real estate agent gave out your number. That wasn't cool of them. But maybe they didn't know the situation. You know you've not done anything wrong. And family members hassling you is just an extension of the same bullshit you had to put up with when you were younger. Yeah, it sounds like they're looking for a handout. OP. Well, my number is to give out to potential tenants and current ones as well. The flats. It's nothing fancy. But it's a place for people who are down on life and are rebuilding everything from nothing. Sometimes unexpected things pop up and I want them to be able to contact me in case of any emergency. Like I said, I changed my legal name, so the agent had no way of knowing that we're related, and besides, he doesn't know about the past. Update. 
Six days later. So, it looks like no matter how one tries to keep the past in the past, it always finds a way to hunt one down. For me, it took the form of my parents forcing themselves into my life, literally forcing. Like I mentioned in my original post, I work as a live-in nurse caretaker for the elderly and jump between Germany and Switzerland for work. Until Friday, I was at work in Germany. But that changed drastically in a matter of hours after quite a few phone calls I received from my tenants. It turns out that my parents broke into one of the empty apartment units. This is actually an issue, and a big one. In the country where I come from, we have a law that actually prohibits all evictions between October 1 and March 31. And you also can't evict elderly people on disability and those who live with them. Due to the nature of my country, breaking and entering or illegal squatting is also off the table to get them out of my property. I was back in my country on Saturday morning due to this. But what I didn't expect was a letter from the court in my mailbox, stating that my parents are suing me for alimony and lovely circumstances. After reading this, I actually flew into a rage and the only reason why I'm actually able to get this BS off my chest is thanks to my lovely tenants, Robert and Anna. Robert was the one who physically stopped me from breaking down the doors to the flat that my parents took over, and Anna and her dog Aries are total pros at calming your nerves. Who can resist a goofball golden retriever? Guys, you need to understand something here. I despise my parents to the core. Every single molecule of my body emanates pure and unfiltered hatred towards them. Endless tirades of hate spewing from my mother's mouth at each and every single tiniest mishap. My room being reduced to nothing but my bed, desk and chair. Nothing else. No curtains, lamps, bed sheets, toys nothing for the smallest mistake. To this day, I have a few marks on my back from my father's lesson on respect. They're not big, but they will stay with me till the end. The iron machine's wet cord is no joke. The day of my 16th birthday and their indifference to my two uncles introducing me to my adult life. After which I decided that enough was enough. The month it took for me to get back into shape after I went back to show them that I actually made something good out of myself. There were many more. I just don't know what to do, what to feel, what to think. Anger, sadness, frustration, disappointment, fear, helplessness. I finally started to make my biggest dream come true. And now those two toxic waste specimens have decided to ruin my dream and drag me down to a point where I just want. I'm sorry guys, it's just so much. Edit to cut all and every single speculation about the country. It's Poland. Be my guest to fact check the child to parent alimony and eviction bans during the winter season. Comments. Bear in prime. You can't evict people who break into your property in the country you're from. What country is that? Sorry for you, OP. I did read your original post, and damn, life gave you bitter cards to play on your hand. And yet you managed and fought your way through life. I have much respect for you. OP yeah, a sick and twisted situation. Unfortunately, during the winter season, it's forbidden unless, as a landlord, I'm able to provide them with a different place to stay, for which I would have to pay myself. I don't want to do it for two reasons. One, out of principle. Two, I'm being sued for alimony, and I don't know how it works. I'll find out tomorrow after I meet up with a lawyer, but I don't want to risk that the court will see this as me being willing to help them. Heil to the never in a million years, bear in prime. I 100% understand you. But you might have to prepare yourself mentally that there's a chance they'll get you with the alimony. Fingers crossed that they won't get a single cent from you. And may your uncles face punishment in either life or the afterlife. OP well. On Tuesday, I have a meeting with my former boss and his wife. They know what my relationship with my parents looked like. And they were the ones that took care of me after my trip home. I plan on talking with them to see if they would be willing to testify in court. Sure as hell. I'm not going to go down without a fight. Update. Three days later, I'm seriously done with everything. The amount of hatred someone can have for another human being who did nothing wrong to them, except being born simply can't be described by any words I know. I've got to get this out of my system before I go completely nuts or break down again. My parents were monsters. Picture a perfect family that raised hell behind closed doors. I know what it feels like to have your room stripped of everything as a child, being beaten up with a belt or a cable to the point where it leaves permanent scars on your back. Half of your side is sliced open with a broken plate after your mother gets into a fit of rage. Why? Because that damn plate fell out of your hands due to exhaustion after 30 plus hours of being forced to stay awake. Oh let's not forget about the 20cm burn scar on my arm. Even now, you can tell where the front and back of the ironing machine were. The dress wasn't ironed perfectly enough. The indifference to what my uncles did. Almost 20 years. I've managed to put that behind me. 
I've learned to look at those scars as a reminder of how far I've managed to get away from hell. But hell always catches up. It doesn't matter how far you run away. It always comes back to hunt you. Always. I'm sorry for the rant. But I did nothing except sleep and cry recently. I had my appointment with my lawyers on Monday. We went with the police to get my parents out of the apartment. It turns out that tenant eviction during the winter is illegal. Just as evicting the elderly or people with only social security, all of the above applied to my parents. But they were not tenants and could be forcefully removed from the building by the police. That didn't go well. I don't have a father anymore, and my mother got arrested. When I arrived with the police and my lawyers in tow to get them out of my property, things got ugly. And I mean really ugly. My father hoped he burns in hell for the rest of eternity got worked up and whatever over the situation and got a heart attack. Died probably immediately. He literally just dropped to the floor and never got up. My mother, the raging lunatic she was and is, had one of her rage attacks and decided that since it's my fault that her husband is dead, I should share his fate. Before the police were able to cuff her, she managed to leave me her final parting gift. Another damn scar on my leg. I don't care that the sperm donor is dead. I'm actually glad. I don't care that the psycho I came out of is locked up. I don't give a rat's arse about it. It took me years to get over my past, accept what had happened, and learn to live with all the reminders of the past that I carry on my body. What I care about is having to deal with yet another one. Even in the end, they ultimately came on top, leaving me with another reminder that the past always comes back to hunt you. No matter how hard you try to get away. Thanks to that show, my lawyers were able to send a petition to court to get the alimony lawsuit dismissed together with a bunch of other things. And the illegal living situation also resolved itself. I have enough evidence to keep my mother behind bars for years to come. And my father is burning in hell. But it brings me nothing but pain because they won again. They managed to destroy my peace and my confidence. They managed to take away the joy I felt till they showed up. And they left me with a final reminder of them. Comments. Samarkand 457. He won. One of your childhood monsters died, knowing that his attempt to torment you had failed. The other is now going to spend much of her life stewing in jail while watching her husband die. She will die penniless when she gets out. I hope you heal. Main Lake 98887. I don't see how they won. One is rotting in hell, and the other is probably never going to talk to you again. The best thing you can do now is heal, and I would recommend seeking therapy so you have someone to talk to about these feelings. They can't hurt you anymore. Update 3. Hello everyone. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to respond to everyone who reached out. I'll do my best to take some time to review all the comments you wonderful people left in my previous posts. I sort of took a leave of absence from life. I had to stay a few days in a hospital because of a mental breakdown. This wasn't caused by the sperm donor passing away or the incubator being put behind bars. That's something I would gladly throw a grand party to celebrate. But by having everything, my entire damn past came back all at once to hunt me after the reality of my body having another battle scar because of those monsters. Every single person is able to deal with a certain amount of drama at any given time. But when you have to manage years and years of SHT, pain, suffering and abuse all at once, it tends to be simply too much. Especially when you are simply on your own without any family or friends to vent to. I'm sorry for that rant. But when one has no one, sometimes even the internet and some strangers can go a long way. Updating on the situation that took place during the police intervention and the aftermath. The sperm donor is dead. There was no police brutality or anything of the sort. He simply couldn't handle the situation, stress, or whatever else came with that. So he dropped dead on the spot. An ambulance was called, and he was pronounced dead. He was then taken to the morgue because they needed to get the autopsy done. To be honest with you guys, I don't give a single F about that. I gave my statement, and the rest will be handled by my lawyers going forward. I don't care. Never did, never will. The egg donor is behind bars, and thanks to my lovely cutthroat lawyers, she will remain there at least for the duration of the upcoming criminal case trial. For the first time in my life, I'm happy that the justice system works slowly. To be honest, the longer it's going to take, the happier I'm going to be. I've already spoken with my lawyers, and I said that any sort of out-of-court settlement is completely off the table, and to not give up even a fraction of an inch, both in criminal and civil cases. As far as the alimony lawsuit, well, I have nothing to worry about after what they tried to pull off, what happened, and a few other things lawyers talk. And that's not my field of expertise. As for my tenants, well, I had a lot of questions and whatever else after the SHT show that took place, but I managed to, let's say, avoid answering most of them. Quite a few years ago, 
I learned the hard way that no matter who you are now, you're going to be judged based on who you were in the past. A working girl, if you get what I mean. That's the reality of the country I live in, and the majority of the people here. I've learned to be alone and deal with everything myself. Sometimes life is what it is, and all we can do is simply accept it. Friends and family are luxuries not meant for everyone. It hurts, but it is what it is. As for me, I'm going to stay at the hospital for a few more days, just to be sure and try to sort out some of my feelings and emotions. On the 20th, I'm going to be going back to Germany to start another contract job. That's that, I suppose. Second story. OP's mom evicted her son in 16, after he called her out for uninviting a gay kid to his sister's birthday party at Mother's Day dinner. This happened a few days ago, and he's been staying at a friend's since Sunday night-ish, to be exact. They've argued a lot about his friends in the past, but this time it was about me, and he still hasn't come back yet. We went out for dinner for Mother's Day when we began talking about my upcoming Sweet 16 and a family that mom doesn't want there. I have a friend named Max, not real name who was always cool with us, but since he came out as gay, I haven't been allowed to hang out with him anymore, and mom uninvited him from the party because she said she was paying for it. I told them many times that I wanted him there, and he's not my best friend, but we're still friends. But she said no because it's her money, and has also gone on Facebook to talk about why his parents raised him wrong and stuff like that. Mom said that Max's father wasn't too happy about him coming out too, but I don't know too many specifics. When we were at dinner and the party came up, my brother got upset when my mom made a comment about a Facebook post she liked about BLM that she was looking at or agreeing with. But my brother called her a hypocrite when she showed dad the post and said that she supported them while she hated gay people and that she was no better than a racist. And dad told him to stop. And mom said that she didn't want to talk about the party at dinner. But he didn't stop and raised his voice to where others heard him. And he called her a WH. And that's when she told him to leave and he got up and drove off. Mom has thrown a lot of his things out. And she said that she has talked to the parents of the friend he's staying with. But he hasn't come back yet. And I feel like it's my fault. And I don't know when he'll come back. Part of me doesn't even want the party anymore. And I just feel like I ruined everything by even wanting one. Is there anything I can do to fix all of this besides telling them that I don't want to have the party because mom said that I'm having it whether I want it or not? Update. My brother ended up coming home in a few days. But before he did, I was able to talk to one of my friend's moms from school and tell her what happened and everything before she already knew about Max coming out and was cool. And she said that she saw my mom's Facebook post too and that she disagreed with them. I showed her my first post and some of the responses saying I didn't do anything wrong and that I didn't want to call CPS or the police on my phone because of parental controls. But she said she would call CPS for me because she didn't want them to find it on my phone. I also told her that I didn't want a sweet 16 anymore. She didn't call when I was there, because she said she wanted to talk to her husband about it first when he got back later. But my brother also came back with dad a few days later too. And mom said that they worked it out, but didn't tell me any specifics. He was upset with some of the things that mom threw out or went through his room when he wasn't there. But mom said she still might have some of them or something. And I told him that I was able to keep a few things, and that I was on his side and disagreed with mom. I'm not sure if CPS did anything because he came back really soon after. But mom went back on Facebook after I told her that I didn't want the party anymore and posted that it was Max's fault and a bunch of things about him again. And she also said that I'm going to have it because she paid for it. Mom also said that they're no longer paying for his college after he yelled at her at dinner. But they haven't argued much since he came back although I feel like they might as we get closer. Right now, I have no intentions of having the party, and I'm embarrassed by mom. She also said that if I didn't have it, I wouldn't be allowed to volunteer at the summer camp thing I got this summer, so I feel like I have to if I want to do that, although I really don't want to. I just want to ask if there's any way to get through this without coming off as hateful like my mom. All of my friends know that I support my brother Max, but I'm afraid that no one will like me because of her ways, even after the party. These were some comments that OP made inside of her first posts. Dad doesn't listen to me, and said that when I tried to talk to him about how I disagreed with mom, that it was disrespectful to talk to one parent when another had already spoken. And he just lets mom do whatever she wants and didn't do anything when she kicked my brother out at the restaurant either. I can ask her, but I don't know what mom's been talking to my brother's friend's parents about, and how long he'll be staying there because she won't tell me, but I can ask. I can't see him because mom used to always drive me to that friend and has been talking to the parents on the phone this week, but it's too far to walk. I've been trying to call him, but I will text him because he hasn't been responding to my calls. I've tried to keep a few of the things mom threw out, but she tossed a bit, 
and dad hasn't listened to me either and just goes with what she says. I tried to save a few of his things that mom threw out, although she threw out a lot, and I'm going to try and text him a bit too after he didn't answer my calls this week. But I just don't know when he's going to come back even though mom's been talking to his friend's parents for the week. I'll text him that I appreciate him for sure. But mom is going through his room as if he won't come back it seems, and I know it's not my fault, but that's what made me feel like it was because she literally went through everything in his room and started moving or tossing things. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.